this video too this is fucking amazing so this features brendan flip-flopping very heavily on francis and garner as most of you know it's now been confirmed that fucking francis and garner is going to be fighting tyson fury um very very soon and obviously brendan was one of the people that was very vocal in his displeasure of francis signing with the pfl and the contract terms that came out and the fact that it would allow him to do boxing and do mma and that the mma fight would be delayed for a while and that he'd be pursuing more boxing opportunities and just essentially poo-pooing the entire endeavor that fucking francis and ghana was on and just being you know a hater like he always is which is really ironic because he's the first person to call out people like myself and other homeless cats for being haters but he's the biggest hater in that regard because his hate comes from pure point of like somewhat um jealousy or something a little bit of jealousy of not being involved in a conversation and wanting to just kind of insert himself in there it's very very strange but he's kind of from real real jealousy and he was really forward in his kind of displeasure of you know francis's decision to basically go with the pfl and the terms of that deal but obviously now francis has kind of been vindicated in terms of getting that front tyson fury fight confirmed which is a big deal in itself and um you know everyone has to kind of eat some humble pie but brendan instead of kind of addressing it like a normal person saying hey i had my reservations about it this is what i thought and then kind of talking about it he decides to completely pretend like we don't remember what he said a few weeks ago or a couple of months ago so this is a clip i put together i put on my channel i'm going to unlist it but i'm just going to play it through so you can see it um but essentially it's one half is Brendan talking about Francis Ngannou when the, you know, when he was essentially um, negotiating or talking through that whole PFL stuff and the deal that got announced there and the fact that he turned down one championship allegedly, blah, blah, blah. And then the second half of the clip is Brendan talking recently at the, in, on his show, the Shorb Show, and essentially sucking up to Francis Ngannou now that he's got the Tyson Fury fight confirmed. Let's play the video. One championship goes, we believe in mixed martial arts. We believe in martial arts in general. So Francis will have an opportunity to A, fight for a world championship in mixed martial arts, and B, we're open to him fighting boxing. He boxed first. That was his caveat with UFC. Well, I want to box first and then fight in UFC, and UFC went absolutely not. One championship say, cool, we'll let you do that. We'll be part of that. We'll be part of the marking of that. We'll do all that for you. Now, what's he going to do? It's not good, man. And I don't know who needs to get in France here. Nobody needs you. Big martial arts across the board, boxing across the board will be just fine. Nobody's bigger than the game. Nobody. Nobody. The closest person we've ever had that was bigger than the game is Conor McGregor. He has some a little more leverage than Francis, right? Dude, man, but this is not going well. This has been a f***ing disaster. What Francis is doing is leading the way for other fighters that are stuck that feel like they have no voice, that feel like the UFC is the only show in town, even if they're mistreated, what Francis is doing is he's taking the hits for them going, no, 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 look, there is a way to do this. There's another route you can go. Shout out to, to his agent, you know, mm -hmm. who took all, Markel took all this sh What are you doing? You're ruining his career. What's up now? What's up now? You know, yeah. they made the right decision. They went, they crawled through some like Andy Dufresne, they came out on the other side. Now they're fighting Tyson Fury. From it takes one. cojones, dude. Yeah, you're Imagine the shit he went through. Remember the tax he got? The racist tax? The shit he went through? He went through some shit. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. it must feel good. They knew what they were doing. Shout out to Markel, man. You did it, brother. Proud of you, man. And Francis, my God, dude. This is insane. Absolutely, utterly 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 shameless legitimately shameless but you shouldn't be surprised really right because this is the same guy i've said before his thing with jerseys which is a really thing to say things to say but like the whole football jersey thing right he owns like a million jerseys from loads of different teams that he allegedly supports and follows and any other normal person would get shamed out of that right a normal person would get questioned like why the fuck do you allegedly support or follow so many different teams every team is your team and whenever they're in the news or they've done something amazing they've won a championship or they've had a really amazing game or match or something monumental has happened in their history suddenly you're a big fan of them and you're wearing all their merch at your store so at your shows or on your podcast and stuff it's just bizarre and a normal person would be like a little bit embarrassed by it and kind of just not stop doing it but he doesn't he kind of leans into the whole like i wear tons of jerseys and just flip-flop between different teams so it's no surprise that that same guy is also the person who is not afraid to get on camera and basically pretend like they didn't completely rip into francis 
He was one of the biggest haters when the whole Francis thing happened. He was one of the biggest haters in terms of saying the agent didn't know what he was doing. I think there was one clip he even questioned, I think, Francis' command of English or something. Like, said something like, oh, he's doing the deal by himself. He hasn't got an agent or manager. Can he really, like, get his thoughts across? I don't know. It was something really insane. Something like, oh, he can't speak English. So why is he doing this deal by himself? And that he's way over his head. The lawyers that they got at the UFC and at one championship are known more than him. And really kind of insulting his intelligence and the intelligence of his entire team, Francis' team, that were dealing with, you know, his kind of where he'd end up going after, you know, leaving the UFC. And he just couldn't figure out why they would turn down the one championship deal because at the time, him and the one championship guy, Brendan, were very close. So clearly the one championship guy was feeding Brendan some information about the negotiations she was going through with Francis. And I guess the one championship guy was painting Francis out not in a favorable light. But that's understandable because he's the person negotiating with Francis, right? He's the promoter. So he's going to protect his brand and he's going to try and make it seem like he's the one that turned down Francis when sometimes it's not that simple. Maybe it's a little bit more complicated. Either way, um, Brendan just took what that guy said as gospel, ran with it, ran with it completely and essentially kept trashing Francis and his ability to put this deal through. Now this deal has come through. He's now pretending and acting like he was always the biggest fan he always knew it was going to work out he always knew francis was going to prove his doubt was wrong it's absolutely heinous how shameless this guy is it's absolutely disgusting to be fair he legitimately thinks that we don't remember the things that he said before and the funny thing is all of these clips are taken from his fucking instagram or i think no his tiktok account so the clips are up there of him trashing francis in the beginning right questioning his you know you know understanding of the game and whether or not they can get a deal on the table and the deal through and blah de, blah 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 and then suddenly him changing his tune and saying they've done an amazing job well done this is incredible the manager does a lot of, a lot of fucking praise markel markel this markel that francis this suck 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 him off like oh my god man absolutely shameless shameless this man is it's absolutely ridiculous <laughs> honestly i can't get past this how kind of flip floppy he is it's so it's such an unlikable trait that should be easily fixable because you should have a level of humility to be like you know what i doubt if france's ability to get this deal over the line or to get the ability to kind of get the boxing side of things done now he's done it he's clearly showed ufc fighters that there's another way to do business you don't just have to be sucking at the teeth of dana white in the ufc just hold your hands up and say, I didn't think they would get it done because the UFC usually wins because they usually do. They usually get vindicated in their decisions and just keep moving on. He didn't do so. He instead tried to pretend like, oh yeah, he was just saying that all along. Absolutely heinous, man. Brendan is the fucking worst when it comes to this sort of stuff.